little bit from using Identica to having hosted installations, kind of like WordPress.com, but for microblogging. So you can go here and sign up for your own private website to have it all hosted. But for most of the people here, you're probably most interested in installing it internally behind your firewall so you have control over it. So go ahead and go sign up. But with StatusNet, there's a lot of interest in concerns such as identity. So for example, let's say Obama. This is Obama meeting with Hu Jintao, right? Obama has the website whitehouse.gov. We know this is whitehouse.gov, right? We, we go to this website and we can verify the identity of the website and who's on it. It has policies. And also, this is a cool thing. I helped with this a little bit, but I can't take full credit. Is, uh, you know, whitehouse.gov uses Creative Commons license now. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And something actually, this is this really helped by Australian government and initiatives by people who are really active in New Zealand and Australia. So it's pretty, pretty interesting to see this. But what we're talking about is how can you define who is this person? Who is Obama on there? If you do a search on Twitter for Obama, how do you know that this is him? How do you know this is the account? How do we have beat this identity fail? But also, how do we have a service that we can use that uses um, software that we can look at that's backdoor free, right? We want to get past this fail whale. We don't want to have a problem where it's so big that people start developing pop culture icons around it and wearing it and actually showing, oh, did our service goes down a lot. Check out this fail whale. Well, while it's funny, it might be more interesting to have a service that just works. And on a more serious note, how can you use something like status like these status updates for something in health or a more real-time system. I'm not talking like the kernel type of real-time, but for example, I have a friend, um, my, he's Ravi, and he, um, he works at Scripps, UCSD, he's, uh, he's the attending at the ICU at this hospital, and he, they, they can't use certain services like Twitter and um, Plurk because they're not HIPAA compliant. It's a rule for doctors that they have to be compliant with this service. So how can you install some software that they can use in a hospital like this and be able to keep up with, let's say, a patient, someone who is ill and there's multiple doctors and people working to ensure someone's health? Like, you know, if you're in ICU and someone's heart stops, you want to be able to hear across the board what's happening. I don't know if you've ever been into like a hospital, it's kind of like uh, McDonald's a little bit. There's like beepers going off everywhere and you're kind of like, ah. But doctors are really advanced. They have Blackberry. They don't just have like old school pager now, right? So they get their, if they have on their Blackberry, it says like, you know, patient going down or something or heartbeat drop, then it can spread across multiple devices and hopefully healthcare can increase. So StatusNet is really about being able to control your own status. And it's also about being able to have a strong community using a GPL licensed software called StatusNet for however you want to see it. You want to be able to have this trust in your users and who, who are your friends. You don't want something like this, like this is MySpace, like I don't even know who these people are. Does anybody have a MySpace account? I mean, do you use it? Is it just kind of like a bunch of like spam upon spam these days? So. How do we have something that's like your own, your own little like microblogging universe? And since we're using open source software, how do we build on and make something really cool? Something that we can also federate and have multiple servers connected together. Um, I live in, I live part time in China and Twitter Identica is actually even blocked in, in China. Maybe Google will be blocked in China soon too. <laughs> That's actually not going to happen. I, I guarantee you there's no way Google is going to leave China. But anyway, that's a whole other subject we can talk about over beers. Um, but how do we have multiple servers connected in a way that you can't shut them down? What about in Iran? Right? You, you see people change their icons to the green icons. How do we get a service up that's federated and distributed? You can't shut it down. People can reroute around filtering and censorship. This is possible with 
open source software and a distributed model and some other fun tricks. So StatusNet was launched by this guy, Evan Prodromo, and some other people who were common free software developers. Evan um, started Wiki Travel and also he contributed to the plugin system on MediaWiki. So there's a lot of kind of cool open source developers that have been brought into the fold on this. My job is to get more developers involved. And as Evan said, as I'm the ambassador of Quan. Do you know what that is? Have you ever seen that movie Jerry Maguire? Maybe it's an American movie. <laughs> Well, there, it's, there's, a, there's a football player, and it's like an African word for, like, you know, happiness and sharing. So I, I, this is, I'm, bringing, I'm bringing happiness here to this room. In fact, so much happiness. Anybody want a shirt? <laughs> who, who wears a large? You wear a large. Ah! Oh. So, thank you, yes. Throwing failure. It might actually have been physics fail. Um, at 6 p.m. tonight, we're going to be doing, I'm going to host like a drinks at this Hashigo Zaki. And I have a bunch more shirts and stuff. And I want you guys all to come out. It'll be fun. Because I know at 6 p.m. my brain's going to be like leaking like out of my ears. And there's only one thing that fixes that. <laughs> Talking. <No. laughs> Beer. Right. So StatusNet's a company. It's about a year old. Raised some money. Um, and it's also just a global company. And there's something like 10 employees. But the reality of, of having this kind of company infrastructure and something I've always been interested in because I have like a million free software projects is how to actually support something. Like how do you get people to take out the trash, right? You know, nobody wants to go and fix bugs all the time, right? Unless it's really easy <laughs> or in your interest. But how do you get people to really support this software? So that's the idea of having a company. And Brian Viver is one of the guys that we brought on board. Um, he's the guy who's like the chief ar architect of MediaWiki, which is a software that powers Wikipedia. So something like this guy just added some cool queuing um, software that, if I'm not mistaken, is like what Twitter just spent $50 million investing in. He did it in like a week. <laughs> it's kind of cool, right? I like to say that stuff. It's like, you know, there's all these guys making all this money in these companies, but there's still like cool hackers who can just like knock out big chunks of code and not like get all like flustered about it. But then there's me. I'm also doing this stuff. Some of you guys know me from some of these projects. Um, probably most recently Creative Commons stuff. And Creative Commons is this kind of, uh, you know, project where they're trying to get people to be all like happy about sharing, playing with dinosaurs. Yeah, I don't know how that got in there. <laughs> but also, I, I helped put on the Libra Graphics conference. So that was a really good thing that you put on. You know, Donald put this on. It was uh, on Monday. And it's a kind of fun fun community. It's always fun to make, make graphics, right? And to go to 6 p.m. drink fests. <laughs> right, Andy? Yeah, this conference is interesting because there's so many people with their heads down. Because it's like, it's laptop time, right? But I know that. Like, I have two phones in my pocket right now. Like, what's that about? I had a guy, and he's like, calling me from San Francisco. He's like, yeah, there's a plumber here right now. I got to, uh, you know, what do you want to do? You want to clean out the, uh, you know, the, the garbage disposal, or you want to get a new one? I'm like, ah! That's my status updates. I've got two of them going off. They're like buzzing right now. These are more people who are involved, and maybe you guys want to be involved as well. This is the new model of StatusNet, so there'll be more like subdomains. So you will have your own little universe. The service. So when we first launched this product and project, that's the fun part about having a startup, is you can call it both. Um, we launched this Identica, and this was pretty fun, right? This is where most people know StatusNet. But we shifted it into here being a business, trying to find out ways to support the software. And the idea really is to grow this network so people can have something like maybe a niche community for cooking. Or we want to have Ubuntu.status.net. That's completely like an Ubuntu universe. Or maybe Ubuntu wants to have it internally. They want to have their own 
uh, software that's specifically themed for Ubuntu. Well, that, that's all possible with this, this service. This is the kind of thing that we already have, but we're also going to be adding some more things. This is kind of what Mako was talking about, these free network services. Free network services being able to add some kind of business model around uh, supporting infrastructure, because it costs money, right? It costs money to host servers. Actually, I had a really good idea, and somebody probably here in this audience can like figure this out, but what do you think the cost is of all those like notification emails you get into your email inbox? I mean, that takes like energy, right? I get like once, like, uh, Donna added me to trip it. You know, you're like, read it. There's got to be some like dollar figure to all these like status updates. It's kind of like annoying me a little bit. But some, anyway, somebody's got to pay that bill somewhere. So we're trying to figure this out. It's kind of, kind of fun trying to figure out like how to support it. So beyond just having these kind of basic free and intermediate services is you can in install the software right now. You can go and download it. You can input it onto your laptop. I can even go through it with you if you want to. I can show you how to do it. It's pretty cool. Um, but you can also have some someone from StatusNet help you install it. That's another idea, a way to like make money off the software. And so far, there's several different companies that have used this. The software is all PHP, MySQL, pretty simple. Oh, yeah, 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 thank you. It's P. Yeah, I need to edit this slide. Thank you. PSQL. Um, but actually, there are people who have worked on adding a MySQL backend as well. So, you know, we can always do that. The software is federated. This is a pretty cool thing because it uses a new standard that we're calling O status. It's kind of like Irish, you know, O status, O status. <laughs> you know, like OAuth. We're into Irish naming these days on the web. There's no more I, there's no more E, there's no more X. It's all O for open. O is for open. J is for John. <laughs> A is for Andy. Okay. <laughs> um, this O status allows for remote subscription. Well, that's really funny. Anybody using this Cairo doc? You see that? You see that thing pop up? It's pretty cool. Um, o status, so distributed status updates. And I'm just going to fly through this. So there is this open microblogging spec that was written early on in the software's development. But it was only text. It allowed for, it didn't allow for profile updates. And also, it was one way. What's up? For which software? Yeah, um, yeah. Don't go. Go to openmicroblogging.org. Try that one. There's been a DNS change between O status and openmicroblogging.org, so it's taking a second for it to propagate to New Zealand. <laughs> Twelve to forty-eight hours, but usually two hours. Um, and also, it's o OAuth based. So. With the new O status, we're trying to add some support for more current technologies. And we want to be able to do all these things. I'm not going to jump into them all. But these are things that we support with StatusNet right now. We support doing these types of things. This is Twitter's added support for several of these, like Geo and other types of ways of notifying people, groups, lists. Like, how do we have a standard that represents this, that allows for distributed software? Um, out of scope of this is syntax, client API, and privacy, um, mainly because our best use case right now is to make some distributed protocol that can be used around the world. There's other, you could use email, right? Emails, you could consider that private if you want to focus on privacy, but we'll probably add that later. But the cool thing is that O status is really what we're kind of calling a protocol mashup, but it's not even that, it's just using the protocols that are already out there. There's no need to really reinvent the wheel here. There's PubSub Hubbub, which is a, a way to push, it's also called P little u s h, a way to push uh, updates. There's activity streams, which is a cool uh, standard for no, like saying what you've done, like an activity, like follow someone. There's salmon, this is a way to be able to, you know, salmon swim upstream. It's a way to go upstream to find a comment, like a comment back to the original owner, right? Because you're spread all over the web. This is a cool thing that guy John Pans was working on at Google. 
He's a pretty cool guy. A lot of these are coming from the open web and Google and Facebook and uh, Mozilla have hired the developers to do it, so it's, it's pretty stable. And then Webfinger, which is another cool, rapidly developing technology uh, developed by Blaine Cook, which allows you to identify someone. Like, So I could make uh, John, readjohn.org is my website. There's a standard way to be able to identify what, your, what services you have to offer and be able to find out where they, they point towards. Jeez, people won't leave me alone. But the real cool thing is, so the reason you went to ostatus.org, and this is de rapidly developing, so we're trying to develop like a cool way to identify this right now. So if you guys have any ideas about which one looks the best, I'm open to that. See, this is how we do things in real time. Which one looks the best? Andy, what do you think? Q status. But these are, these are a little more like RSS, you know? That's wrong? You don't like that? But it's, it's, it sounds like Q status, it's not like O status. Andy developed, Andy developed that um, bubble thing, so. <laughs> so you maybe cut off the little tail? If you, you tail on the left, quite mirror it? <laughs> what? Ah, good idea. Smart. The one, well, we, we, but we didn't want it to be too like, like we're trying to get a lot of people to adopt it. So I'm a bit worried about like having it look like it's like, you know, our service. Like, hey guys, use, you know, we're doing this alone. I don't want to be like George Bush, right? I don't want to go it alone. <laughs> okay, good, good point. But you don't like the orange ones? Really? Is what? They back down. But yeah, the thing is, is like bubbles are like so generic. Bubbles and light bulbs. Andy and I have worked on more projects with bubbles and light bulbs than you ever want to know about. <laughs> they all mean something about ideas. <laughs> so this is status net. Um, oh, whoops, my slides are broken. StatusNet is cool also, and this is like fun stuff, like for hackers and stuff, like plugins. And you get to see my favorite one. This didn't make my slide transition here. There, so Twitter integration, Facebook integration, there's somebody working on Orkut integration. You could even add like integration with like GitHub. That would be a kind of a cool one. You could like authentication. You could add authentication maybe with GNOME services. What is it, live.gnome.org? But that never really panned out, did it? Remember that? There was like a move to do that for a while and then it just kind of like fell apart. Um, but there's also the Pubs and Hubbubs, a plugin. And then the really cool one, have you, you know those like things where it's like speak like a pirate, you like type in an email and it's like, R, matey, blah, blah, blah. You know, it takes your email or your text and converts it. Last week, uh, last Friday, we had a big, uh, we, had, we do these things called status camp. It's, uh, you know, we get together and have fun, but we never really camp, camp out. Um, <laughs> But we wrote this hillbilly plugin. This guy Zach wrote a hillbilly plugin that. So you, when you're typing in your updates into your your window on StatusNet software, he goes like, "Hey, I'm here at LCA." It'll say something like, "You hit return," and it'll convert it to hillbilly. Like, be like, "Dosh Garnet, you know, I'm at I'm at LCA right now." Damn, you know, it'll convert it. Or you can do like Snoop Dogg. That's another fun one. Um, <laughs> We should, no, you know what we should do? It's like, I could do one that converts American English into uh, New Zealand English. I find that people have a hard time understanding me in New Zealand, but not in Australia. It's really weird. Do you have a comment on that? Totally. Totally. Have you have you guys seen this new like Google has a transliterate on the like uh, Gmail now? It's freaking awesome. Basically, you can type and it'll convert into like Bengali to Arabic Persian like in real time, and it's not perfect. But with these plugins, we can do something like so. I have region.status.net. I could have every language being transliterated and or converted, so that someone my my updates could be converted into something rough 
I mean, you'll get way more people who can read something about what you're talking about. It might be horrible, but just an idea. Also, there's API. This is another way. A lot of the services are saying, like, oh, look, we're open. We have an API. But then their software is not open. It's not the same thing. But we have the same thing. So, you like, like, if you want to integrate uh, StatusNet into something like Twirl or some kind of client that supports Twitter, then it'll just work. But we're also working with these big companies to have these standards in place so that it becomes very easy to work together and for you to be able to have like 15 phones in your pocket or you could even be like Chewbacca and have one of those like uh, you know those things with bullets but they're all phones and they all have different status net installations you can be like getting buzzes all day you're like ah ah I gotta update my phone I gotta update my phone and you know it just has to support the Twitter API it's cool but also there's theming capabilities. So all you really need to do theming is to have a, it's a style sheet and it's pretty simple. And we're gonna be doing a competition and once we launch the .9 version of our software pretty soon, we're gonna be doing some kind of like month long competition, which might be fun to work with some of you guys on to do and we wanna have some cool themes. We have one that's the matrix theme. You know, it's like impossible to read, but it's not very functional. <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah, the GIF animations. And then there's another one that's like, somebody made a Twitter one. It looks exactly like Twitter. But we can't really ship with that one. <laughs> it's like, what is it? The photo GIMP or GIMP shop? What's the Photoshop GIMP? GIMP shop? Nobody use that? It's kind of like Cinepaint. Does anybody use that? No. Anyway, never mind. Wrong subject for this crowd. <laughs> that was for Libra Graphics Day. Um, and then there's an admin interface, kind of like WordPress. Like you can go in and change things, change like your your theme. You can change a lot of the plugins and these types of things really quickly. But just to give a little bit, like you know, get into like uh, adoption. Um, so StatusNet is being used by a lot of companies internally, and the biggest one right now that's public is Motorola, and they've rolled it out, and they call their service Moat Moat. They've rolled it out, rolled it out to their entire company. And the, there's this big electronics show called CES in Las Vegas, which is also at the same time as the world's largest porn convention. Yeah, no, it's not an accident, actually. Um, so CES is a serious electronics conference, and they used it to coordinate the activities during that. So it's pretty interesting usage of StatusNet. ABC uses it internally, which is an American broadcasting corporation. Sun has been using it, and they've actually been contributing code back, which is pretty cool. And um, Creative Commons, of course, has to use it internally. They, they have something called like ccteam.status.net. And the, the really cool use for this is that they, in, internally at Creative Commons, there's like a mailing list, and people would be like, hey, I'm going to get to the doctor. I'm going to go, I'm leaving early today. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, by the way, today I'm going to miss the phone call, the SAP call. And it was just always like this big cascade of emails. And it's kind of annoying when you're like, emails like your, the way you control your universe, right? And so now this has all been shifted to this status net install. So it's, it's, it's ambient information, right? It's stuff that you don't need in front of your face, but it's kind of been distanced to the side. So how are we doing? How are we doing on time? Can you guys take some more pain? Can you handle all the information? I can't speak as fast as Mako, but I can give more slides out. Okay, one second pause. So what this comes out of, this software and the big push, and what I'm most interested in in the free software universe is the move into free network services. Free network services meaning software that you can get the source code for if it's on the network. So you can go to Autonomous right now and you can check out Mako, myself, Evan Perdomo, Mike Linksfair, a lot of different people, uh, Louis Villa, uh, Bradley Kuhn from SFLC are involved in this, trying to push this. But it's really a move to take and get the four freedoms that we know and love to apply to network. We want to be able to have the free software that goes with something like 
Flickr. We want to be able to get to the source code. If, if, if Yahoo nukes Flickr, we want to be able to take our photos in that service and host them somewhere else. We want to do that. It's not enough. Free is not enough. We don't want to have other people's PCs, right? There's a great hip-hop song, OPP. You should look it up. It's pretty good. It goes like, are you down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. Look it up. <laughs> but also, like, what's the terms of service? Like, it's your data, right? You want to be able to control where it goes. If you read some terms of service, like Facebook, you're uploading photos, and you're all of a sudden, you're in Australia, and you look at a, a bus station, and there's a picture of you, like, doing something really silly, like jumping into a cake, and they're using it in an advert. They have the rights to do that. You know, you, you should look at the terms of service. We need autonomy in our services. We need more services where we have control over what we're doing, with what companies are doing with our data. So this comes out of this Franklin Street Declaration, and that's part of the autonomous group, and it's a statement identifying what free network services, what they should look like, and exploring also the idea, because not everyone's ready to jump into this, particularly like Google and large companies. They're not quite ready to jump in. And, the, and, the, and GNU, the Free Software Foundation, is not quite ready to jump in either yet because it's still a little bit early. And of course we know that RMS, how he uses the internet, right? <laughs> Other people use the internet for him. <laughs> so let's look at three different cases of how this would apply. So for developers, if you want to support the autonomous free network service, Franklin Street Declaration. So use the, GP, the, the AGPL, the Faro GPL. Create free network services to replace popular ones. Um, since I, I, this is what I did for Creative Commons and I kind of do for SASNA is you should also try to work with companies. If you know of companies that are doing something interesting, it's not like you just want to replace it. Sometimes it's just you just need to write an email to people and be like, hey, you know, can you support this? Can you use this? It's always worthwhile to try to work with people. You'd be surprised. Rather than to go nuclear just straight away. Like, I, actually, I don't really agree with a lot of those approaches that um, the Free Software Foundation takes some time, which is very polarizing it's for businesses. And hence you get terms like open source. Um, and replace these centralized services with distributed services. This is a really important thing. This is like Satisnet. If something happened and took out every single developer, like which you can do at large company meetings around the holidays usually with one tactical strike, uh, <laughs> People could take the software and run it themselves. They can, they can down, you can download your data and run it somewhere else. It's easy. For service providers, choose free software services. Release the code back to the community. Allow for people to export their data. Google does this pretty well. On a lot of services, they do it pretty well. They allow you to export a lot of your data. And then for users, users should definitely consider the service options. Um, Ubuntu One, right? This is a big space, this backup space, Ubuntu One, Dropbox. Uh, there was a good talk yesterday about running your own Dropbox. I think that's a pretty interesting idea. What about cloud computing? We just, okay, I'm going to pay $10 a month to some service and just put my data up in the cloud. What does that mean? What does that mean? Like, did, what, what can they do with my data? So you have to consider your options. Try to get the cheapest one. No. <laughs> GoDaddy, right? It's like two bucks. Hey. And use services that follow this declaration, but really it's, you know, like all things, it's about spreading the news and getting more use cases of it, not just making new standards. So get involved, 10 minutes. It's like, you get a sign back here. Identica, use, use the software right now. Identica, your, your status powered by StatusNet, right? You can get it right now. In fact, if you're here and you want to use, you want to sign up for the private beta, you can come see me and I will get you your reserve your domain name, unless it's Viagra, because I got Viagra. I'm going to sell that sucker, man. That's right. When there's like a million of these sites, I'm going to sell Viagra to a spammer. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not evil. Um, and also, like, if, if people are really interested in this, we can sign up for some time. I'm here all week. We can sign up for time to, like, work on the software and, like, have fun, and I can show you how to install it and write something like um, a hillbilly plugin, but maybe more functional. <laughs> maybe a Hello Dolly plugin, like WordPress. <laughs> so, I mean, if anyone's interested in this, definitely, you know, 
hit me up. I've got a stack of business cards. But the real cool thing is today at 6 p.m., we can all go and get some drinks. Um, and there's a place really nearby here. This is Shigo Zaki. They have, I guess, really good beer. This is what Glenn Foster or other people were telling me. Um, so I think we should definitely make use of this. It's before the film. And there's also a Girl Geek, Geek Girls, what is it called, you know? Girl, girl Geek. It's like, yeah, Girl Geek thing. I'm gonna, can I go to that? But do I have to be a girl? But really? So, so, <laughs> is this when I switch teams now? <laughs> Free private beta accounts. Um, I'll, tonight as well, like if you're interested in this, like I can help set you up with that as well. It's, it's, if you have a company, if you have a software project, we want to get you involved. Like that's, that's, that's what I, that's my big thing right now. I want to get more companies to use it. And I want to get more software projects to use StatusNet. Kind of like we have Planet, right? Planets are kind of old now, aren't they? It's like planet.gnome.org. Like, I and mean, we can do status.gnome.org or gnome.status.org or planetgnomestatus.org. Wherever you want, we can set it up. Free shirts. Free shirts. Oh, yeah, I should give out some more shirts, right? Here's a, I have a small and I have a large. Oh wait, no wait, I'm gonna save these for questions. That's right, that's even better. Yeah, sure. Wait, hold on, wait, let me make sure I'm done with my slides. Oh yeah, I was supposed to say free shirts tonight at six and then I was supposed to go, and there's beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I didn't do that. So you can see we're really close. So that Hashigo Zaki is really close to here. So if you want to walk over, then I'll probably be hanging out there, ready to go get a beer and walk over. Otherwise, see you guys at 6 there. Um, that's my talk. If you have questions, let's do it. I have two shirts for the first two good questions. Oh, we have a mic. Mic check. Hey, is this on video, by the way? VR, OK, cool. Hi, friends, if you're out there. Does anybody use video? Oh, Evan is? Really? Did I get fired? Yeah. It's like, you were fired. That's when I rip off my shirt. Yeah. My question is about um, the clients. Like in a, in a, in a business situation, um, if it's in a large corporate, you're saying Motorola and so forth, what's, what's the clients that people, people are using for this to come up with? How does that integrate with? typical things that people have got in a yeah. corporate environment. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's a couple things. So on on in Ubuntu, there's Gwibber. Gwibber is something you can use right now. There's a, Twirl is another client. That's like a Adobe Air client. There's uh, there's some other ones like Identity something. Identity. But, um, Motorola are not likely to have these. I mean, yeah. No, this like is right. No, this is right. This is right. No, yeah, you're right. So, so I'm just talking generally on like let's. So, free software world. There's several different clients that you can use right now. And the cool thing is there's code available. So, the, the, there's great support for Status and Identica in the free software world. Um, in the business world, it's a little bit different story because businesses want to be able to support. Blackberries. They want to have security. They don't want to allow people to use Facebook. They want to be able to have block what people use at their company. So we are working on. We have some like solutions that are in like support packages that also involve uh, deals with companies um, that provide something like Windows Mobile, Blackberry, iPhone, and then it has like your status net baked right into it. So I mean that's that's the solution, right? Internally at a company, because companies they they want to be careful what they use and want to make sure it's secure. So that's that's the solution. But for the the rest of the world and everybody out there, there's the API, Twitter Twitter API support, and that's pretty good for being able to drop in uh, the, like the like you could say like region.status.net, drop that in, and boom you get support. I can show you on my, like over here, right? So I use, this is, um, I use Twirl. And so I have, this is, we use a thing internally at, at, um, 
at status.net, we, we dog food, we, we created dogfood.status.net. And we tried to replace IRC with it. Hopefully there's nothing like confidential up here anyway. Um, <laughs> but we use dog food. <laughs> look, look at Evan's thing. He said, Read John's presentation style is about 20 times more gonzo than mine. <laughs> is that, does that mean I'm getting fired, Evan? <laughs> no. Um, so, we, so using Troll here is an example of where you have multiple, multiple different um, installs, but you're using a, a Twitter-compatible API. So this is how I like to use it, because I, I have Twitter here, I have Identica here, and then I have dog food. I also, ha I also have access to some other ones, like CC Team, and also rejaw.status.net. And that's the idea, so you have these kinds of streams of information. But for a company, they'll have something like, maybe they'll limit it to just one, maybe just dog food, right? You just have dog food. So anyway, okay, you, want, you get a shirt then. You want a shirt? You wear large? More gonzo. <laughs> I'm getting better. Yeah, all right. Now I have one small shirt, though. All right, but you have to ask a question. Yes. <laughs> all right, go ahead, sir. Uh, it's kind of interesting to compare what what you're doing with microblogging and federation and perhaps what Google is trying to do with Wave and its federation. And I think the difference is Google's just a little bit more ginormous yeah. than uh, StatusNet. Um, you spoke bit. of, I mean, this morning's talk from Marco about anti-features and your comment about talking to business. Um, have you spoken to Twitter about some kind yeah. of federation? Yeah, absolutely. La last week, I, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, last week, Evan and I... <laughs> I'm done. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm fired. No. Wait, I'm fired because I show this on, the, on this big screen. Wait. Here, what should I, what's the best answer? No, I'm not. <laughs> well, still have company credit card for beers, right? <laughs> um, um, so last week, Evan and I drove around in his parents' car. No. Now I'm just trying to get fired. No. We, we, we went around to, like, I think I had, like, two meetings at Google last week. We met with Facebook. The, I mean, this is, on, this is on the open stuff. These guys are, all these companies have guys who are working on open source, like open source programs, like what Leslie Hawthorne and Chris DeBona do. And so we met with Facebook. We met with uh, guys doing, uh, like, Chris Messina, who now works at Google, talking about all these standards. So Because we all want this to work well. It, these companies realize that bigger internet means more traffic, more ad sales. So we're Google, Facebook, Twitter, all these places, definitely. You have to have, to be able to have this to work, you have to have a really open web. And we all want to see some form of distributed discussion happening. And it's not just like between the Facebook, between the Twitter and all these things. It's also like different cool novel applications for being able to message different types of servers in different parts of the world. So yeah, definitely. And my, that's one of my high priorities, actually, is like, I, I mean, I come out of free software, open source, but I, it's amazing, like, just talking to businesses, like, how often it's pretty easy just to get moving on something with open now. Microsoft got a bit of a slapping when I think they stole, was it Plurk or some, someone's interface? And Evan kind of quickly said, hey, you can have what we've got for free. Yeah. So yeah. did you get any well, Did that actually get any take up? Ugh. Well, you, you guys know, so I live part time in Beijing, right? So uh, needless to say, there have definitely been um, some emails that were sent around and stuff. But we'll see what happens, you know, with that. But yeah. yeah so that's the cool thing is we can say something like that. It's like, oh, really? Um, you know, Microsoft, there's, they, they, 
companies in China often hire outsourced. They outsource a lot to vendors, and there's some education that needs to happen in some parts of the world, in in China and other places about protection of intellectual property. That's a very、uh, necessary thing, and we. We don't want to be bad guys. We want to. We want to help. I mean, if, if they use our software, that's that's better for everybody. If somebody like Microsoft, if so, like Facebook, if they write code and they release it out there that allows to connect with Facebook, they, they're going to be happy. This is why Facebook is using the so much effort on the platform on the API. They know that the more people who are using Facebook, the better off they are going to be long term. More clicks, more ad clicks. Okay, one more question. Any more? Any more? Well, let's do a challenging one. <laughs> Not that the other ones weren't challenging, right, Evan? So you mentioned earlier that some of the communities you're involved in use their own data set instances. Yeah. How do you sort of promote your community to start trying to use this service? How do you get to the state where your user group or your workplace use this data set instance to say, "Sorry, guys, I'm sick. I won't make the meetings that day." And、yeah. sort of move people towards that. Well, so my mom's using this now. This is kind of crazy, right? Like she got a BlackBerry, and like she started like sending me updates. It was like pretty cool. But so I think there's a the the benefit of something like Twitter being so huge is that it's all over the place. So lots of people know about like Twitter.、Um, it's it's harder to sell like status. And like the, the specific technology, to other people say, "Oh, there's all these other things. They work together." And if you think about it that way, it's in their best interest to support centralized service, kind of like what Microsoft has done, monopolizing、um, the OS, right? But trying to get more people to use it internally is sometimes simpler because you can say, "This is the software we're running." This is what we're doing right now, and here you go. Here's a service. So you know how you were talking about our company externally. You know you were talking about like our product and whatever. Oh yeah, Google Phone got released. Uh uh. You should talk about that internally now. So we're starting to see a thing where there's a company like Motorola. You know how many employees they have? Like how many of thousands? And maybe there's teams that work in like five or six different cities around the world. And they, you lose some kind of connection. So this is a way to reconnect people. We're finding that this, there's this kind of water cooler effect that's emerging. And not only that, like think about this. Like think about like a company like Motorola or Google. Like think about Apple. Like there's think about some old insurance company. There are people within organizations that are really effective. It doesn't matter what their titles are, right? Let's say that you work at a company and there's like five real open source hackers there. How do you find these guys? Like, like I know me. Like, I want to work with the most effective people. It's not about like title or rank. I want to find when I do something when I'm really interested and I have a cool idea. I want to find the right people. And so we're starting to see an effect like that. So I think there's people know more and more about what this means, like to be able to like do short messaging. But I think also、um, there'll be kind of there's there is a niche. Focus of kind of training each other. Like, oh, have you have you have you guys been using Moat Moat? Have you guys been using、uh, you know StatusNet? Have you been using it? Have you been updating? But then there's also people who just never will use it either. Just like every company that has like 50,000 calendaring programs. All right. Okay. So thanks a lot for attending. 6 p.m. Hashigo Zaki.、Um, I have more swag to give out, but let's hang out. Let's have some beers. You know, and if you want to talk to me, we can talk now afterwards. I'll say.、Um, thank you. Thank you, John.、Uh, I'd like、Cheers. to show your appreciation, and here's your gift. Thank you, John. Ah, wow, cool. Wait, so, so wait, so I got fired, but I got a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everyone.